want to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas from the Circle Church of Alexandria. We ask that you enjoy what we present to you today, and we hope that it brings glory to God. We hope that it pulls you into his presence today. God, we thank you so much for allowing us this day. We love you, God. We're ready to worship. Are you guys ready to worship with us? Yes, amen. So let's do it. Hallelujah. Let's go.
joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, he is my hope. Oh, 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 oh. he is my hope. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, 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 Thank you for tuning in this morning, this day after Christmas, December 26th of 2021. My name is Pastor Carlos Malley. I'm the discipleship pastor of the Circle Church of Alexandria, located in Alexandria, Louisiana. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Vincent Smith, we want to thank you for tuning in this morning. This morning, I'm going to preach a very familiar text. It comes shortly after the birth of our Lord. If you can turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, and I'm going to be reading from verses 25 to 35. This morning, I will be reading from the New King James Version. But feel free to read from whatever version that you have. Again, I'll give you an opportunity to get there. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, starting at verse 25. And I'll be reading to verse 35. And the word of God to the people of God reads. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, 
waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. When Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Let us pray. Gracious God. I pray that you would touch my mind, that you would touch my mouth, that you would touch my memory, that everything you have given to me this week in study of your holy word about this man named Simeon, about these parents named Mary and Joseph, and this child, this Savior, our Messiah and Lord, Jesus Christ. I pray that everything you've given to me, I will give to your people this morning. Father God, I know that most of our church family will be tuning in today. But Father God, the, the beauty of the internet and the World Wide Web is that I know that this sermon has the ability to reach the ends of the earth. And I pray, Father God, that wherever it lands, whatever part of the world it lands, I pray, Father God, that it will land on good ground in the lives of the listeners here this morning. May I point everyone who is listening this morning only to you. It is in Jesus' name that I pray and we say amen. You know, I am blessed to have three small children. My first is Carlos Andre Malley, Jr., we also call him CJ, Noah Alexander Malley, and then Camille Abigail Malley, my princess. Now, all of my children mean the world to me. I love them the same and equally across the board. But there was something very significant about being there when CJ was born. And the reason being is because CJ was our first. CJ was the first child in his mother's womb. CJ was the first child that Nicole and I were extremely nervous about. I can remember being in the hospital and after giving birth to CJ, they told us now you guys can go home. We were so unbelievably nervous to bring this child home. Not only were we responsible for ourselves, now we were responsible for the development and upbringing of this young boy. And we were extremely nervous. I mean, picking him up, we thought we were going to break his arm or break his leg. I can remember us trying to feed him and make sure that he got all the nourishment and things that he needed. And it was just a, an, a, an anxious yet exciting experience for us as new parents. By the time we got to Noah and by the time we got to Camille, it was a totally different experience because we had gone through it. So I think about this story about Mary, about Mary who's been impregnated by the Holy Spirit and her earthly husband, her, her husband Joseph, the one that had to endure that now, of course, we as believers, we love this story about the immaculate conception. But can you put yourself in their place? This young teenage mother 
who had never been with a man and yet was willing to answer the call to carry the Lord, the Messiah, the Savior of the world in her womb. And this young carpenter who loved Mary so much, who had taken upon the responsibility to be Jesus's earthly father. Can you imagine the scrutiny that they experienced? Can you imagine the ridicule that they experienced? Can you imagine how challenging that must have been? Not only for the small village that they lived in, but all the word that had got out about what had happened of this wonderful, of this marvelous, of this amazing birth of this son. I imagine that they felt much different than Nicole and I did back on May 28, 2012. And so as we think about that story that we had been hearing about in each theme leading up to Advent, when we think about peace, when we think about joy, when we think about love, when we think about all that Jesus brings to us through his spirit, through the comfort that he provides each of us. This is what Simeon now in this story is experiencing by being able to finally see what he had been waiting for his entire life. Let's go back to verse 25. It says, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. You see, the consolation of Israel refers to a time when according to the prophet Isaiah, God would end Israel's time of alienation and suffering through the advent of the Messiah, which again, we just celebrated. The theme of Simeon's tone is to encourage us here this morning and to console the listener. This week was a very challenging week in my day, my, my day to day position as a, a prison chaplain. This week, we had one staff member that transitioned and went on to be with the Lord. And we had another staff member who lost his father. And I had to be with staff to share that news. I had to be there with them as a comfort and someone that my leadership thought enough of to say, we need you and the other chaplains there to console our staff. That is what Simeon is doing here. He is consoling. It was a time of consolation would also be the age of the promised Holy Spirit who himself is the one who consoles and encourages. You know, so it was great that we were there. It was great that we were able to pray, to read scripture, to speak into the life of our staff. But at the end of the day, when I am consoling anybody, I'm trying to point them like Simeon to the one who can truly console them. And that is the one and only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who we would also know as the helper. In John's gospel, chapter 14, verses 16, it says, and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper and he may abide with you forever. Just in the next chapter in Chapter 15, verses 26, John continues to say, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will testify of me. And then if you go another chapter up in chapter 16, verses seven, it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So it is the Holy Spirit that is coming to Simeon. Let's look at verse 26. It says, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death 
before he had seen the Lord's Christ. You see, what I find amazing is the same spirit that is revealed to Simeon, the Messiah, the Lord Christ, would come before he died is the very same spirit that leads him to the temple to see himself in the form of a baby. I will say that again. What I find absolutely amazing in this verse is the same spirit that revealed to Simeon the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, would come before he died, is the very same spirit that leads him to the temple to see himself in the form of a baby. Therefore, the, the connection between the coming of the Messiah and the arrival of the time of consolation prophetically meets and is fulfilled in these texts. That brings me to verse 27. It says, see, so he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. You see, Mary and Joseph are referred as Jesus's earthly parents. Even though God has impregnated the Virgin Mary, Joseph is still considered the earthly father of Jesus. So the terminology Luke uses here is not inconsistent with previous scripture. Luke 3.23 says, now Jesus himself began his ministry about 30 years of age, being as supposed the son of Joseph. Luke notes the providential timing the spirit leads Simeon to the temple courts to be ready for the earthly arrival of Jesus and his parents. You see, in verse 28, it states, he took him up in the arms and blessed God and said, blessed means he praised God when he held the Lord in his own hands. You see, I know that on yesterday, many of you, you opened presents. Many of you, you, you ate real good. You probably ate too much food. I know we did. Many of you relaxed and, and you got to hang with your families. You got to kick it with your peoples. But how many of you took a moment to praise God and thank him for the presents? Thank him that you ate good. Thank him for the family. Thank him for the community. Thank him for all the things that he has given you. That's what bless means. It's, it's you're praising and you're thanking God for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he will do. Simeon in expectation of this Messiah, of this, this love Child is, is, is he's, he's recognizing who Jesus is, acknowledges while holding him, praising and giving adoration, for he understands that this child will change the destiny of the world. I want to take a moment and ask you this morning. While you may not in physical representation hold the child. Have, have, have you ever had God? Have you ever had to lean on God for holding on to you? Has he ever had to hold your hand in difficult times? Has he ever had to be with you through challenging moments in life? It's easy to praise God when things are going really well for us. But how many of us praise God when things are challenging? When you go through trials when you go through tribulations, when things aren't going as well as they should be, the height of the pandemic. As we see Omicron now trying to come back and, and spur and spark all over this country. Can we praise God in the midst of that too? Can we praise God in the midst of those families that Christmas for them is a challenging time? Just shared with you that this week Christmas will never be the same for at least two families that I personally know. But Simeon is here and he's he's holding 
his child who is really in the future going to hold him and hold all of us. And he's blessing and he's praising God to be able to see that moment in his life. Then it states in verse 29, Lord, now for letting your servant depart in peace according to your word now emphasizes the fact that the Messiah has indeed come. I am reminded of the story of, of Israel, Jacob, Israel, and Joseph, how Israel thought that Joseph had died when he was 17 years old because his brothers out of his jealousy had thrown him into slavery and came back and told them that the boy had been killed. And he wept and he grieved and he was never the same. But when Joseph, after all the trials he had gone through, being in, being lied on, being thrown in slavery, being, being, being forgotten about while he is incarcerated, God still had favor on Joseph and eventually uses him to save the nation of Israel. And eventually Israel reunites and gets to see his son again. And it says in Genesis 46, 30, and Israel said to Joseph, now let me die since I have seen your face because you are still alive. The joy that Israel experienced because now he had seen his son and knew that his son made it through all the challenges. And all the things that he had faced. Oh, imagine how that would feel that for 13 years you thought your son had died. But yet you see that he is alive. The joy that he had in his heart. This is the joy that Simeon is experiencing by holding this child. Paul would say to the letter of Philippi in chapter 1 verse 20. For I am hard pressed between the two having a desire to depart to be with Christ which is far better. Paul is essentially saying, I, I love you all. And obviously God still has a purpose for me here. But if I had to choose between staying here on earth or being with my father in heaven, I would choose being with Christ because it is far better. Oftentimes I, I find that all of us, and I am guilty of this too, that sometimes we cling on the things in this earth more than the things that are promised to us eternally. We hold on to the temporary things, which everything in this world is temporary, every single thing. But Simeon understands that he has lived his life, and now he says, I can peacefully die because I have seen, I have held, and I have praised God for the Messiah spoken of from the Old Testament law. That brings me to verse 30. It says, for my eyes have seen salvation. You know, I wonder if, and I imagine preachers and theologians over the years have always wondered, do people understand the significance of what salvation is? What do I need to be saved from? Why does that matter to me? You know, salvation is the redemption of man from a bondage of sin and a liability of eternal death and the conferring of him of everlasting life and happiness in his savior. Is anybody listening here today? Because Simeon understands the significance. He had been waiting for the Messiah and now he had seen him. Now he can go in peace because he understood that there was an afterlife waiting for him for believing in this child, believing in this Messiah, believing in this Savior. Notice that Simeon says, my eyes have seen your salvation. To see Jesus and all he's done is to see salvation embodied in him. Even though you and I may not physically see it, we see it through the word, we see it through the spirit, we see it through the things that he has done and is doing through our lives. Simeon understands the magnitude of that. The psalmist said in Psalms 119.66, Lord, I hope for your salvation and I do your commandments. He says in verse 174, I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. 
Do you understand when you are reading the Psalms, you are reading a man that is struggling, that is a sinner, that is at war, that is on the run, that is, that is struggling through life, and yet he is praising God. When he's, when he's writing Psalms 23, he is not joyous at that time. He is struggling. How many of us can still praise God in our struggles? How many of us can still cheer him on when that diagnosis wasn't what we thought it was going to be? How many of us can praise him when we walk to work, walk into work on Monday and we get released or we get terminated? How many of us can praise him when people constantly criticize us or accuse us falsely of things? The psalmist is reminding us that no matter what I go through in this world, the one thing that I can hold on to is my salvation. It's eternal life. It's something that no man, no woman, no one on this world can take from me. And that is my relationship with my Lord and my Savior. Do you have that today? Because if you're listening and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you are already separated from God. You are already, you are already headed in the wrong direction. But that can change today. And God, like Simeon, has kept you. He has kept you today to hear about salvation. Simeon seen salvation. You are hearing about salvation. What are you going to do about it? When I look back at, at Luke chapter three, verse six, it says, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All flesh implies this salvation is universal, but only for those who want it and accept. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But you have to believe in that. It is available for all. But for those who accept it and believe it and confess it, those are the ones who will receive this salvation that Simeon and so many others have received throughout the course of history. In verse 31, it says, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. The psalmist said in, in chapter 98, verse 3, the psalmist says he has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. And the end, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. As, as Simeon is fulfilling this prophecy from the prophet Isaiah, it says in Isaiah 52, 10, the Lord has made bare his whole arm in the eyes of all nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Who is listening here again today? Yes, I'm, I'm grateful you got your gifts. And yes, I'm grateful you got to kick in it. Yes, I know you're going to make more memories than you took a lot of pictures. But who remembers what Christmas is really about? Christmas is about Jesus. Christmas is about the advent of our Lord coming into this world. Christmas is about what God has given us through Jesus Christ. All those gifts and all those things will be open. But guess what? Around March Around April, around May, my kids are not going to play with those toys anymore. They're going to outgrow the clothes that we bought them. And then next year, they're going to wait again for more Christmas gifts. But this gift that is available to you here today is eternal. One time you receive it and it is yours forever to be with our Lord into eternity. Then it states in verse 32, the light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and to the glory of your people, Israel. Isn't that amazing that God brings revelation not only to the nation of Israel, but he brings revelation to us all. That you hear in this text that it is not solely for the 12 tribes, but it is for all tribes. When I think back on how the law was given to Moses, but faith, it came first through Abraham. Abraham through faith. God gives Moses the law, but then God gives us Jesus to fulfill 
them both. And it says in Isaiah 49, 6, indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be the servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore and preserve ones of Israel. I will also give you as the light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Luke would later say in the book of Acts, for so the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be salvation to the end of the earth, repeating the words of the prophet Isaiah. Just a chapter ago, Zacharias prophesies of his son John's ministry when he says to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Some of you this morning are living in the world of chaos. You think making more money, or you think your job, or you think your relationship, or you think your community alone can give you peace. Well, let me tell you something. I have all those things. God has blessed me with a job I can provide for my family. God has given me a wonderful family. God has given me a wonderful community. But I am not exempt from the worries and the stresses and the challenges of this world. And sometimes, no matter when you have all of that stuff going on in your life, the only thing that you have and the only person who can truly give you peace is the Holy Spirit. He is the only one that can give you the peace to navigate the career, to maintain your marriage, to raise your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, to work in unity with your community. It is the peace that we find in God. And I want to ask you again, do you have that peace? Where are you looking for that peace? Are you looking for it in those things that I mentioned? Well, let me point you to the one who can offer you that peace, who can offer you that joy, who can offer you that hope, who can offer you that love. And it is the one that Simeon is talking about in this text, and it is Jesus Christ. That is exactly what the salvation only found in Christ offers us today. When I look at verse 33 through 35, it says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken to him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. You see, in spite of all that Joseph and Mary have seen during their pregnancy, they are amazed at Simeon's song. Simeon predicts that because of Jesus, many will be brought to a moral decision. He said some will be destined to fall, while others will be destined to rise. You see, some will perish and be totally separated from God because from the love of God, they're, 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 he is offering you his son, but you won't accept him. You won't accept or believe anything that I have said today. And because of that, he has created already in this, in this text the fall of those who don't believe, but also the rise of those who do believe. While those of us who accept Christ today will rise with him in the resurrection. There is a cost to follow Jesus, brothers and sisters. And many of us who have been following him for some time understand that cost and are still learning the cost of following him. I often tell 
illustrations from the prison because that's what I do. I work in a prison. That's where most of my stories come from. And one of the most challenging things is to walk in solitary confinement in a place full of darkness, full of evil, and to be a representation of Christ and yet be cursed at, yes, be mocked, be ridiculed, but still be a representation of Jesus Christ. Still stand there and take it. And it reminds me of when Jesus took it. When he hung there on the cross, when he was spit on, when he was cursed at, when he was beaten, when he was bruised. All for me and you. All because of the sin of the world. And if Jesus can endure that type of persecution, what is any type of persecution that you and I can endure? And I remind myself of that week in and week out when I walk out of that area and I say, thank you, Father. Today, I may have passed this test. And some days, admittedly, I don't always pass it. But God is always teaching us something, brothers and sisters, in those moments of trial and those moments of challenge and those moments of adversity. But what he wants me to teach you here today is that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you will be eternally separated from him. And I nor you nor we with all this 800,000 people have died of COVID in the last year and a half, 800,000 people in America and counting. And I am grateful to just be standing here to be able to preach to you today. But the moral of that story is you and I don't know when our day is going to be called. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. The young man who passed away this week was 37 years old. He was 37 years old. Leaves behind a wife and a 15-year-old daughter. And he fell asleep and he didn't wake up. There is no promise or anything on this earth, nothing. And so if you hear nothing else coming out of my mouth today, I pray that you hear that if you don't know Jesus Christ, that you will accept him today because you have no idea what tomorrow is gonna bring for you. Because I want you, just like for those of us who have called on him, to be able to receive him and rise on that day of the resurrection. Simeon isn't the, the only one who's seen the ultimate sign, the visible affirmation of God's declared intentions to reject his truth is to also reject the whole of God's revelation, brothers and sisters. So what will you do today? We are closing out these last couple of weeks in, in 2021 and walking in prayerfully in 2022 as a circle church family. As a, as a universal church, and my prayer as discipleship pastor, and what God is convicting my heart on, is that we would grow in knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the Son. That we would choose to follow him, and that we would choose not to reject this truth over the other things that are being taught in this world. Today, I offer you what Simeon recognized. And I go back to the Advent. In week one, we talked about joy. Then we talked about peace. Then we talked about hope. And then we talked about love. And why could we do that? Because going back to the prophet Isaiah, he says, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, I. I thank you for that word. 
Thank you for using me to preach that word. But most importantly, Father, I pray for the response. I am not going to see the response. But I pray, Father God, that if there's someone out there that has never accepted Christ, that they will say a small prayer that goes something like this. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But Father God, I accept this child and I accept this son and I accept this savior as my savior and Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you would teach me and that you would lead me and guide me in discipleship until you call me home. I pray that they will find a good Bible-based church. I pray that they will make a public profession through baptism. And I pray, Father God, that they will follow you and chase after you all the days of their lives. Simeon, in his old age, holding this child, represents a high anticipation of what he had been waiting for his entire life. A lot of people out there are looking for things in the wrong place. It is my belief, Father, that the drug addict is looking for Jesus. It is my belief, Father, that the alcoholic is looking for Jesus. It is my belief, Father, that the prostitute is looking for Jesus. They're looking for a temporary solution that only you can solve. And I pray, Father God, that we as a circle church family would take salvation and discipleship into 2022 more serious, Father. I take responsibility for that, Father, as the discipleship pastor of this church. And I ask you, Father, that you would give us a fervor inside to love people and love community enough to share Jesus Christ with them. We thank you so much for a great Christmas yesterday. We thank you for family. We thank you for fun. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the food. But Father God, all those things are temporary. We thank you most importantly today for Jesus Christ. We thank you for this child that you sent into the world. We thank you for his teachings. We thank you for his miracles. We thank you, Father, for salvation through Jesus Christ. While that is the first step, that is the most important step. And I pray, Father God, that there is any man or woman out there that had never heard and never received him, that they will. I also pray for those that, that have received him but have turned away, have fallen lured to the things of this world, have fallen lured to the things of the flesh, that they will repent, turn from those things and come back to you. So we thank you here, Father God. and We love you. And we magnify your holy name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father, in giving us, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, we love you, we love you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus.
Hello, everyone. Thank you again for tuning in with us today. Thank you to our praise team for our closing song, for our service. Uh, we appreciate all the sacrifices that you make to lead us in worship, to usher in the spirit, and uh, to cause us to, to point us back to Christ. And so thank you so much for all the things that you do. For our first-time visitors that tuned in today, there's a link that you should be able to see on the screen that uh, gives you a way to connect with us. So feel free to click on that link. And uh, by clicking on that link, if you do that, uh, we as a ministry commit to uh, sending you a, a gift. Uh, just a, our way of saying thank you for tuning in. Again, you could have tuned in with anybody, but you decided to be with us. And for that, we appreciate you. We also want to give you an opportunity to worship through giving. Uh, the ways that you can give to the Circle Church, you should be able to see it on the screen. So we will leave that up for a few minutes. And I'd like to read a, a text to you. It comes from Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 9. It says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all of your pro produce. Then your barns will be filled and your, with plenty, and your baths will be bursting with new wine. For those who understand the power of sowing and reaping, the Circle Church is a good place to sow. Um, we, we, we want to advance the kingdom of God. We want to impact our community. We want to be able to touch lives. And the only way that we can do that in a tangible way is through your, through your donations and through you giving to this ministry. So uh, we thank you. Our church family, we take care of our own, but if you feel compelled to give this morning, uh, we ask that you would consider sowing into the Circle Church of Alexandria, and we do appreciate you for doing that. For those that participate in our local men's ministry, our next meeting will be at the Starbucks on January 8th. Please be flexible. For those of us who live in central Louisiana, the Starbucks on MacArthur is hit or miss, so... Uh, like I said before, uh, we can go over there and, and it, it, it may be open, it may not be open, but be flexible. We're going to meet on January 8th if God says the same. The meeting place will be Starbucks on MacArthur. However, just be flexible that that may change, okay? Mixed vegetables. Um, we want to make sure that we're, we're giving to our local food bank, Sister Evelyn has been over that that project project for us. And so we've been collecting cans of mixed vegetables to give to the local food bank. And we will be collecting them and dropping them off on January 2nd. 
So if, if you want to come in and still give or you want to let uh, myself, one, somebody from the leadership team, our POC on that is Sister Evelyn. But if you want to be able to give and, and connect with some of us, please let us know so we can get that down to the food bank. And that's something that we're going to be supporting ongoing. So this month, uh, what they've asked for is mixed vegetables, and that's what we're collecting and bring it forth. And so again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Pastor Smith, he he took a well-deserved Sunday off to be with his family. And so we want to lift him up as he prepares to come in and preach next week. Thank you for enduring me today. Um, as discipleship pastor, one thing I always want to do is encourage our people to grow in the word of God. But for some of us out there, you may not even know God. And we want to make sure that that you have the basic foundation. And so today's message was about salvation, uh, by going back to the basics. And, and Simeon understood the significance of that child. And we at the Circle Church want you to know the significance of accepting Jesus Christ. And so we hope that you do that. So I will go ahead and close this out with a final prayer. And I uh, just want to say again to all of you, uh, Merry Christmas. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas yesterday, and we hope that you have a wonderful new year. So thank you again. Let us pray. Uh, gracious God, we just love you so much. Thank you for a wonderful Christmas season. Thank you for anything that you blessed us with. Thank you that we were, a we were able to bless other families. Other families were able to bless us. Father God, but it's... We, all the material possessions, that's just one aspect of it. We just thank you for love, for peace, for joy, for hope. As we wrapped up Advent and as we this Sunday talk about the salvation only found in Jesus Christ, we thank you for each other. We thank you for community. We thank you for family. We thank you for unity. We thank you for divine health. We thank you for the many things that you have given us. We thank you for your presence today. Even though people are scattered all over tuning into this message, your presence was with them, Father, and we appreciate that. We thank you for the people that make up the Circle Church. We thank you for our praise team. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for everybody that's a part of this ministry. As Sister Cheryl used to say many years ago, many hands make light to work. And we thank you for the people that put their hands and their feet to the plow at the Circle Church of Alexandria to make this ministry what it is. And lastly, Father, we want to lift up Pastor Smith. We thank you so much for his sacrifices. We thank you for Casey. We thank you for Nora. And we just ask you that he got some well needed and deserved rest and he will be refreshed and ready to come in and preach next week and so father god we love you we honor you and we close out by saying now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask the thing according to the power that works in us to him be the glory in the church by christ jesus to all generations forever and ever amen our service has ended go in peace have a blessed week until we meet again take care